it's a chance. Hartford, Providence, Springfield, you name it. She's been there. I don't know what uh, what's going on with her, but she just keeps showing up. Well, like we said, this Friday could be fatal Friday for Randy, but Randy definitely needs all the help she's, she can get. And I'm telling you right now, I don't trust Georgia Haas. Fans, you got to vote. But we're going to take it up to Paul Trackside for some final interviews to wrap it up. We've got Georgia Haas, Randy Whitman, and Ralphie Valadares. Georgia, my condolences on losing tonight's game. That is Ms. Georgia Haas, remember? And I don't need your crying tile. This is nothing but a mere setback. And Friday night at the Hartford Civic Center, when all the voting is in, Randy will be mine once and for all. And then we'll see who does the crying around here. Okay, well, what do you say to this, Randy Whitman? Well, Paul, I don't plan to cry this Friday night at the Hartford Civic Center. All my friends and family are going to be there, and we're going to win. And best of factor of all is that Ralphie Valadares, our coach, is going to be there. Ralphie. Thank you, Randy. Thanks for the nice words. And Georgia, as for you, you've had it. You're going to get it tomorrow night. You're going to get it Thursday night and Friday night here in Hartford. We're going to, we've had it. You're going to finish you off once and for all. Thank you. you and who else? Really? Yeah, well, my friend. Whoa, I guess this is the week, and Friday is the night at the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, and I'll see you there. That's right, the final game between the War Chiefs and the T-Birds, and Georgia Haas is going to be there, too, and we're going to settle this dispute because the commission will give the final tabulation of the voting in the Georgia Haas-Randy Whitman controversy. This is the last night. Your vote can decide the outcome. Once again, the final score in tonight's game, the world champion Los Angeles Thunderbirds 40, the Northern Devils 36. I'm Paul Greenwood. We'll see you all again next week. Remember, we love you. Bye-bye. Nevada is Championship Roller Derby, and tonight the world champion Los Angeles Thunderbirds collide with the Golden State Bombers. Hi everybody, I'm Paul Greenwood, and what a game we have for you tonight, and what a controversy. As you know, last week, Randy Whitman returned to the T-Birds after scoring a stunning landslide victory in the voting over Georgia Haas. Then Georgia Haas stunned everybody by demanding that the T-Birds pay her compensation for the return of Randy Whitman. Well, the word is that the commission is deadlocked right now on Georgia's demands, but she keeps screaming, I want my compensation. But she doesn't want money. No, she doesn't want future draft picks. She wants two T-Bird skaters whom she has promised to her two staunch allies, E.G. Pretty Boy Miller of the Bombers and Leroy the Bad Boy Gonzalez of the Hollywood Hawks. Now, who will they pick? Huh. Well, for more on this and tonight's game, let's go to our two trackside commentators, those two former skating greats, Ted Maroff and Jess Adams. Paul, you need to take a couple of methylators for that throw, but we love you anyway. But roller derby fans, can you believe it? E.G. Miller wants Mike Flanagan. Leroy Gonzalez wants Ralphie Valadares as part of the compensation package that Georgia Haas is demanding of the commissioner's office. Georgia Haas, the lady in red, she struck again. She may have lost the battle for Randy Whitman, but she's determined to win the war to break up the Thunderbirds. And let me tell you, with Georgia Haas, Bad Boy Gonzalez, and this pretty boy Miller out here, they just might do it. Well, I can understand why E.G. Miller would want Mike Flanagan, even though he wants him to cut his hair, although I happen to agree with that. Hyde Ashbury's been a shopping center for years now. But why would Leroy Gonzalez want Ralphie Valadares They've been bitter enemies for 25 years, Jess. I can tell you why he wants Ralph. Leroy wants Ralph so he can put him in every dirty job. He can rub his nose in the dirt. He does not want Valadares to go out in a blaze of glory. He wants to let that legend go out on every bad note he can dish out, and Leroy's the man that'll do it. And to add insult to injury, Leroy Gonzalez and E.G. E. Miller raided the Thunderbirds training camp. Bob Huey and Tony Swat and two promising rookies at general manager John Hall thought he had iced away. They came in and stole him. Yeah, somebody definitely wasn't watching the back door. These are two blue chippers out there, and they got them both, and these two men are going to do a great job for both those teams. Well, we got to look at tonight's game first.
first, Jess. In the men's field, we've got quite a matchup with Mike Flanagan with all this compensation going on, going up against Bernie Jackson, one of the best big men in the game. This Jackson is tough out there, and this T-Bird team's going to be up against it with that big man and his whole team out there. And in the ladies' field tonight, we're looking for one half of the Go-Go Girls. Patty Fraser, along with Gina Gonzalez and the Thunderbirds, going up against Lori Weichel, the blonde bomber of the, of the Golden State Bombers. Right, this Weichel is a good skater out there. That whole girls' team is good. The T-Birds are really going to be up against it tonight, Ted. Well, everybody here at the Showboat Hotel is waiting for this game to start, so let's take it back up to Paul Trackside. Thank you, Ted and Jess. It'll be a great game. So while I go try to get some cough served to get rid of this East Coast virus, we're going to pause right now. The game will be starting in just a moment right after these messages. Underway, first skating period here at the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas. The girls on the track, the gun goes off as you see Debbie McCorkey in front for the Thunderbirds. Los Angeles Thunderbirds in the green and the white going up against the Golden State Bombers in the blue and the gold. And it's number four, Randy Whitman out in front, Jess, in this first game. Yeah, Ted, I have a feeling it's going to be a rough, tough game tonight. I saw both teams coming here, and they got fire in their eyes. We try to tell them at the top of the show, watch these skaters out there tonight. Randy Whitman coming in the rear of the pack. Debbie McCorkle back blocking number 42, Patsy Delgado for the Bombers. Lori Weichel, the blonde bomber for the Golden State Bombers, blocking Randy Whitman, number four. Patsy Delgado tried to go down on the inside, but McCorkle cut her off. Weichel blocking Randy Whitman. Action's kind of slow here at the rear of the pack, but there's some heavy hitting going on in there. Lori Weichel batting Randy Whitman over the back of the neck with that forearm, Jess. Yeah, this, this Whitman's taking some punishment on his first hand. There's a T-Bird takedown in there. There's a point for the T-Birds. Good job by Debbie McCorkle, and Randy Whitman picks up the point. Yes. Whitman, Whitman picked up one point on that. She called it off before the other jammer had a chance to get in and score. That was good teamwork down there. Well, it's early going, and already these two girls are going at it. Lori Weichel, Debbie McCorkle having a few words here with six minutes, 50 seconds to go in the period. Thunderbirds with a one to nothing lead here in the early going. We tried to say it. These teams started to yell at each other when they came off the buses tonight, and I just have a feeling that, that this game is going to be something, and Ted, it's going to keep us from on the edge of our chairs from the beginning to the end. Look at there. Bombers have a strong team. Wynn Miller, number one for the Thunderbirds, has the helmet. And for the Golden State Bombers, it looks like number 47, Arnie Williamson. Ron versus Vanessa, Arnie Williamson. Good solid skater for the Golden State Bombers going out against Gwen Miller. Gwen Miller out of there. She's flying. She's already taking the lead, Jess. Look at this. Big block and sped on by, but Arnie Williamson's coming by on the inside. Push to the high side, goes by. Gwen Miller coming back. Another hit there. Bonnie Williamson staggers back just a bit as you see E.G. Miller on the inside of the track. There's oh, Michael up there. Oh. Out punishment. Down Lori, Miller. Lori Weichel, big block. Another block. Bonnie Williamson just going to town here. It's like a Sunday drive. Clapping her hands as she goes through that pack, picking up points. Weichel blowing down those Thunderbird girls. We said it, Ted, at the top of the show. This Weichel is doing a great job. There. She knew she got hit pretty hard. Really? Hung out to dry on the rail by Lori Weichel, but there's the girl in a minute. Marty Williamson picked up those points. Gwen Miller over there. Oh! Better on top of the head of the helmet. Well, John Hill well, after E.G. Miller. Look out. Watch out, Miller. I think there's no way to start the game. They gotta, the keybirds have to have her at the end of this game. The referee's going to have his work cut out for him. This is a tough game. There's the boss up there. He wants to be known as the boss. E.G. Miller, as we see a couple of our pretty fans looking on here at the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas. They were looking at Pretty Boy out there, and he's putting on a show right now, isn't he? He's telling the Thunderbirds. You're like Bella Garrett. You're no good. You never were anything good. I guess he told it better than I could. He said somebody let me good. E.G. Miller. Pretty Boy Miller, general manager of the Golden State Bombers. We have another jam underway. Number two, Patty Fraser, one half of the Go-Go Girls for the Thunderbirds, going out against Lori Weichel, the blonde bomber for the Golden State Bombers. Oh, Patty Fraser took a hard fall with her leg tucked under her pretty badly there. Jack. That's a good way to break your leg. First, you're going to have to be talked to about that. But look at this Weichel. She's been involved on every jam at the beginning of this game. She's one of the top girl skaters on the team out there in blue and gold. Oh, she just went right by the outside of Debbie McCorkle. Comes down on the inside, and the Bomber girls are doing a very good job of bottling up those Thunderbird girls in the pack. by Patty Fraser. Fraser did a good job, didn't she? Lori Weichel. Oh, and E.G. Miller. Somebody, call or somebody ought to get up there and take care of Miller. Get him off of that track. 
I guess the girls are going to get him off of that track. There's the two T-Bird Go-Go girls after him. There goes E.G. Miller swishing through the infield. Watch out there, Gina. Watch out, Gina. That's no way to, that's no way to start this game. E.G. Miller, what a snake. They got a hold of it. Look at this. They're not going to wait till this game's over. They're going to start dishing out punishment from the beginning to the end. Well. well John Hall got in the middle of that, and it's a good thing he did. They didn't wait too long to start this, but look at this. Look at this Weigel. She's got all of her points, and she wants this T-Bird skater right up here in front of her. She comes up, leans into her, but look at that. I think she picked up the point there, didn't she, did yes. See, I couldn't figure out what the referees gave on that, but I can tell you one thing. The Palmer's got a big seven-point lead table with about three minutes and 15 seconds to go. It's the first important period of this game. All right, well, the Thunderbirds are going to try and do something about that. They send out their ace. wins up against Marty Williamson again. These are the same two girls as the first game. Let's see how Miller's going to fare this time. Marty Williamson got the best of her start of this period. Gwen Miller's going to come back strong. A better than many years in the back track. Hammering Marty Williamson. Well, this Williamson is dumb. She's a tough girl. Lori Weichel back there just level. Gwen Miller, here comes Marty Williams right through the midst of that pack. Trying to get a Miller got hurt on that jam too. She's limping back there in the back. Let's see how many she's gonna catch Miller. Oh, nice sidestep by Marty Williams and demonstrated some quickness there, too. Yeah, I can't believe what I'm hearing. That's four big points. Mamas have a big 11 point lead with about two minutes and 30 seconds to go. And they're playing right into that man's hands right there. Watch this replay. Miller hits her. Look at this Williams. Tries to tough gal. She's standing right on that track, coming back and scoring. When Miller trying to take off, and there's Weichel right there. That was a hard block. I don't think either one of those skaters were set for a block like that. I think you have to hand it to E.G. Miller. He's crossed up the Thunderbirds. We were looking for Patty Fraser and Rory Weichel to match up. Here comes Marty Williams out of nowhere. He's picked up, I believe, eight points in this first period. You know, Miller's got these girls turned up like this. Look, look at that score, Ted. That's what I was talking about. 11 big points the T-Birds are trailing by. Well, the one. The Thunderbirds cannot period. Here's one of the T-Bird's top jammers going out here now. Darlene Langlois and Ella Chappelle going out against Lori Weichel. Lori Weichel's been beating the Thunderbird girls up all night through the pack. Let's see how she does on this jam. She Ms. Weichel doesn't run out of gas. She's going to put on one hell of a show out here for her team. some big points. Ted, watch this. I think we've got I think we got a replay here. And this Gwen Miller is one great skater out there. Wow. Bernie Jackson just kind of flicked Gwen Miller off the track with a wrist flick. But we're here at the end of the first period. The Golden State Bombers hang on to take a 12 to 10 lead. And the men will be taking the track after we come back.
K. Last week, we heard the joyous results of Randy Whitman's landslide victory over Georgia Haas in the voting between the two ladies. Now, that was at the Hartford Civic Center, and tonight, the T-Birds are back in the West Coast, right here at the Showboat Hotel Sports Pavilion in fabulous Las Vegas. Now, I thought it was only fitting that we should welcome back the T-Bird uniform and to the West Coast, Randy Whitman. Randy, welcome back home. Thank you, Paul. Um, I, you know, I really enjoyed the East Coast night, a great time, but it's sure, I'm sure glad to be back here in a T-Bird uniform. And I'd like to thank all my wonderful friends who called in and voted for me and all the great people I met on the East Coast. Well, I bet you're proud of the overwhelming results of that voting. Well, I am, but I'm also a little bit worried. Worried? Why? Well, because I'm a little bit worried about what might happen to Ralphie Valderas and Mike Flanagan if Georgia gets her way with the compensation and Leroy Gonzalez and E.G. Miller get to take Ralphie and Mike, that would be terrible. Nice I'm glad, thank you. I'm All glad right. I got to win, you know, the voting, but not at their expense, and I'm really worried about that. Well, I don't think the T-Birds are gonna let that happen. I think you should just enjoy your victory because you deserve it. Well, thank you, because I'm really glad to be back here with all the T-Birds, and you know what? We're gonna be this year's world champions again. Uh, that's the spirit, Randy. What a girl, and welcome back home. Well, the second period of tonight's game is gonna be underway in just a moment, right after these messages. of their first skating period, Jess. Well, they seem pretty happy. They only came off with a two-point deficit. And then start, considering the way they started the game, that was pretty good. There's our score, Ted. Well, we've got a second period underway here with the men on the truck. And there's big Bernie Jackson going out with Mike Flanagan right behind him for the Thunderbirds. These are the two guys we talked about at the top of the show. And they're going to, they just flat don't like each other. Oh, look out! Holy, I hope that kid Flanagan, look at him bounce around there. Unbelievable. He's like a rubber band. Bernie Jackson looks twice as thick as Flanagan. Gave him a little shot to the rail and Flanagan went up and out backwards. Ted, the secret is you got to be young to be able to bounce like that. Oh, boy, you got to be younger than me. Bernie Jackson just wiped out Mike Flanagan. Picked up his point over in there and here he comes to the rear. Brent Futura can't do anything. Who's going to stop Bernie Jackson? Sam Watson, a big double hammer. Ralphie Valadares. Jackson has it around the neck and throws it to the ground. Ray Robles is next. Bernie Jackson spins. He just did some punishment. start out the men's period. Well, I tell you, you should have kept that helmet on. Look at that, look at that deficit, Ted. Seven big point lead right now for that team. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go. Grant Futura goes out against Danny Rogers in the blue and the gold for the Golden State Bombers. Number 42, Danny Rogers. Number two, Brent Futura. These are two big, long, tall men. They can really hit out there and stretch it out. They're both about the same height. Oh, there's an elbow to the ribs there. Danny Rogers didn't like that at all. Brent Futura goes right by Ralph Valadares. Running cheat at number 44 at the rear for the Bombers to block Futura. Futura goes down hard. Valadares is up to give him a whip. Valadares is really doing a good job. Now, Valadares needs to get up and move that blocker so his team can't score. point there, but that was an assist from Ralphie Valadares. One big point on there. Charlie Mason, she says they're number one, and uh, Randy said they're going to be world champion out there, and I wouldn't dispute it right now. Watch out. Oh, oh. Ralph Valadares hits Ronnie Cheatham right in the forehead. This referee Seward is Watch out, Ralph. You get thrown out of the game using the skates like that. Right in the midsection. Red Futura, Ralph Valadares. I'll tell you what, if Georgia Haas succeeds in her compensation, the Thunderbirds are going to be hurting, Jess. 
Well, Valadera says he's not going to let, he's not going to Leroy anybody else, and they're not going to let Flanagan go to this man right here because Miller is bound to determine he is going to get Flanagan on his team and break up the T-Birds. That's a chance. And right now, look at that score. They're well on their way of doing it tonight. 17 to 11. Thunderbirds trail by six with only three minutes to go in this second skating period before the half. Mike Flanagan, Rambo Mike. Number you imagine five. a man taking all that punishment. Here is out on the jam again for his team. Number five, Mike Flanagan, the kid with the long blonde surfer hair. B.D. Miller's foul. He'll make him cut that hair if he gets him in a compensation package with Georgia Haas. Palmer's got his jam out there. Cheatham's coming up on Flanagan. I don't know if Flanagan sees him yet, but he better look back over his shoulder. Ronnie Cheatham about 20 feet out of camera range. Mike Flanagan Here already in the rim. Here he comes to the rim. Danny Rogers holds up Mike Flanagan. Wiped out that rear block for the Thunderbirds. Here comes Cheetah too, picking up Morgan, working on Ray Rowe. Miller again. What's Miller doing on that track? Where is that referee? Where are the referees when you need him? Ronnie Cheetah falls off the jam. Number 44 for the Bombers. Oh, John Hall throws a punch. E.G. Miller. Where are they go out there, Ted, aren't they? Watch out, Hall. Look out. They better get over and help Hall. He's going to get hurt. Bernie Jackson's got it behind. Oh, no. I can only say that when John Hall walks in the middle of that, He's going to get some. Those are two big men out there. Hall was a little out man, but he did the best he could in there. This T-Bird team right now knows that they're flat against the 10. They got a nine-point deficit with only about a minute and a half to go in this second period. The T-Birds really want to win this game. With everything that's going on with Georgia Haas and Gonzalez and Miss Miller out here, break up the Thunderbirds. They're trying to break them up piece by piece, aren't they? They sure are, and they're doing a good job of it right here. Nine points down the Thunderbirds trail, 20 to 11 here. back to assist. Coming up, pounding Cheatham in the back. Cheatham up to the trail. Spinning around. Flanagan goes by the inside. Picks up Mike. Sam Jackson up the front. Flanagan's going for more. Good teamwork. Good teamwork. Somebody ought to get up there and help him. Look out. He Here goes. comes Valadez. He's got Bernie Jackson to get by. Five seconds to go. Four. Three. Two. He got them all. And you saw a skate disappear over the horizon. That was Jackson. Pick up what we call a grand slam in this game. He passed every member in the blue and gold out there. Mike Let's see if Flanagan. Jackson can get back up on the track. There's Flanagan. He brought him back to within. Oh, well, Ted, he's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I it. They really will. We'll be right back. Thunderbirds trail by three. Well, it's halftime in tonight's game with the Bombers 20 and the T-Birds 17. Now, I think we'd all like to know a little bit more about this thing about Georgia Haas receiving compensation in the form of Ralphie Valadares and Mike Flanagan from Ge to, who would also get to, to Georgia Haas. Now, Georgia, if the commission gives them to Georgia, Georgia said she's going to award Mike Flanagan to E.G. Miller of the Bombers and Ralphie Valadares to Leroy, the bad boy Gonzalez of the Hawks. Now, wait a minute. Ralphie, let's talk to the people involved here. Now, Ralphie, wh why would your enemy, Leroy, the bad boy Gonzalez, want you on his team? Well, because first of all, I think he's a plain rotten jerk. And he knows this is my last skating season, my final skating season. And he also knows that I wouldn't report to him. But you know, I plan of skating my rest of the season with the T-Birds, not like this. And I know this is Leroy's last chance to try to do me no good, but he won't do it. There's no way that he'll do it. And Mike, what do you have to say about this? Well, Paul, could you imagine me skating for Prudy Boy, E.G. Miller, and the Bombers? I mean, 
I couldn't do it. There's no way. And no, I don't think so. As long as I'm a T-bird, long hair and all, I'll be here with Ralphie and the rest of the T-birds. Well, E.G., let's see what E.G. Miller has to say about this. Look at these guys, Paul. They're scared stiff. They're nothing but a bunch of wimps. You will be on my bomber team. I'm going to make you a respectable skater like you should be. First of all, we're going to make him take a bath, and then he's going to cut that crap on his head, whatever he calls hair out there. I don't allow tacky skaters on my team, and you will be a respectable skater on my team. Well, let's find out what Leroy the Bad Boy Gonzalez has to say. My name is Leroy Angel, okay? Um, my middle name is Angel. You address me as such. I'll tell you something. Now, as far as that goes, let me say something about little potato legs here. I'm going to have the last laugh when he's going to sacrifice a 25-year pension before he quits. <laughs> if he's working for me, he is going to answer to me, and I'm going to make him crawl yeah. like he said a long time ago. That's right, yeah. Just a second. That's just, a second. Years, that's just a second. Well, we try to restore order here, and I hope we can do it before the second half of tonight's game, which is just about to get underway. We'll be back right after these messages. Second half is underway as this pretty young lady is watching the action here at the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas. And we've got action out here on the track. Debbie McCorkle, number three for the Thunderbirds at the rear of the pack, followed by number 43 for the Golden State Bombers, Arlene Sanders. Gwen Miller back to block for the Thunderbirds. Lori Weigel and Marty Williamson have a double block for the Bombers here in the early going, Jess. She's trying to fight her way through. Here comes Miller. Oh, no! Marty Williamson went buckled her legs. Gwen Miller with a leaping Lena wiped him out. Debbie McCorkle picks up two quick points. Well, that's a way to start a period right there, Ted. They just, Miller knocked everything down the blue uniform, did she? Just like a strike at the bowling alley here in the showboat. That just... was good T-Bird teamwork up there. Miller doesn't like it a bit. These fans love it, though, don't they? They really do. As you saw E.G. Miller, there. there's Gina Gonzalez, number five for the Thunderbirds. Are, the girls are having a social out here. And I thought things were bad enough and heating up in that interview at halftime. But look at these girls. They're going to continue it. Watch this, Ted. But either one of these girls can see Miller because the t is blocking her. And at the last minute, they realize it's too late. Right in the back. Debbie McCorkle tipped those to the Phillips for a couple of points. Hey, what do we have here? Well, it looks like somebody from Hollywood made it to the game. They look like they're rooting for the T-Birds like everybody else in this building. This is definitely T-Bird country here tonight. <laughs> Let me see. What's that T-shirt say there? I couldn't quite get a look at that. Look at the score, Ted. The T-Birds are leading by one point. They've been, it's been an uphill struggle all night long. This is the first lead of the game that they've had, Jess. 21 to 20 here early in the second half. Four minutes and 55 seconds to go. Here's half of the T-Bird. Go, go, girls. You got that helmet on. It's just a designated score for our team. Patty Fraser going out against Lori Weigel of the Golden State Bombers. Maddie Fraser worked on her backside, but Lori Weichel hangs in there. Comes by on the inside, a couple shots to the back. Maddie Fraser goes down. I think she used some hands there today. She used both of them in there. Now Weichel's good. She's a tough gal, though. Referee was out of position. Here comes Weichel over in the pack. Tina Gonzalez, the other half of the go-go girls. She's holding her up because she's trying to hold her up because the other go-go girl's coming on a late chase. That's two go-go girls out of it as Lori Weichel's coming through down on the inside. Picks up the points. E.G. Miller up it. Girl can hit, she can hit like a mule out there. Boy, she swatted him down like two flies. She wound up the penalty box, and that's a tough thing to do right now. I think she may have wanted that penalty. She might be a little tired out of that jam disc. We see a big buzzer in front of us here. Yeah, she uh, she might have been a little tired, but she don't want to penalize her team. Miller don't want that man out there. That yeah. bird out there one bit, does he? Bird's throwing the pickled finger of fate at him, and I don't know if EG likes it. Those were some interviews at halftime. Right? Boy, I tell you, wasn't it something? I, you know, Leroy Gonzalez comes in the building. I have Ralph Valadares. I can't remember when I've seen, seen him so incensed. Really? Who is E.G. Miller to call him wins? We got a jam underway. Gwen Miller, number one for the Thunderbirds, going out against Marty Williamson, number 47 for the Bombers. Gwen Miller really laid some shots in there. And it's hard to Marty Williamson. Miller has done everything but hit her with a kitchen. 
kitchen sink tonight, and she can't get rid of that wheel. She's coming up. One of these oh! She what? got her leg caught on that jam. Boy, that wheel went right under that kick rail. Yep. Marty Williamson coming by on the inside, and boy, those Bomber girls took the Thunderbirds high and picked up the points. Yeah, Mella got hurt on that jam, too. She got the skate caught on that bottom rail and couldn't get it out. She's limping in there. Marty Williamson's been making hay with Thunderbirds all night long. Uh, Miller is only 102 pounds, dripping wet with those skates on that there, but she can still hit, but she can't get rid of this girl Williamson. John Hall all night long. John Hall can't like what's going on. They're trailing by seven again after they took the lead there for a short time. The Bombers have asserted themselves again with Marty Williamson. Lee G. Miller's out there yelling, break up the T-Birds, break up the T-Birds, and he's got a seven-point lead. The T-Birds really, they, they, they can't afford to lose this game. You wonder if this compensation thing really is starting to take a toll on them, Jess. They just, they just don't seem to be able to get on track. They, they do it in basketball and baseball and every other sport. It's ever going to go anymore. It's, it's kind of an unusual situation at the IRDL, but we've got a jam here. Number five, Gina Gonzalez, going out against number 42, trailing her by about five feet, Patsy Delgado. I like this Gonzalez. She just sparkles back there, right? She smiles. Oh, she just keeps on coming, doesn't she? Big block by Michael. Gina Gonzalez having a tough time. Patty Grazer blocking Patsy Delgado. Oh, Michael with the forearm. Oh, right up the shoulder. Look at that. Hey, Grazer got down low, took her skates out. Nice job by the Go-Go Girls. Number five, Gina Gonzalez. That was good. That was good teamwork. The fans really appreciate that. The T-Birds need more points than that, but she had to call it off. That other jammer was coming in there pretty tight. There's E.G. Miller. Well, he's giving orders out there, and he? he wants, he said, he's telling them to keep an eye on me. He said, we're winning this game. The bomber boss. John Hall had to pull the scoop there with the referee looking on. out there because he's got about a six-point deficit. He's only got a minute to go in this last girls period, the third period of this game. I'll tell you, Jess, it looks like the Bomber girls really have the Thunderbird girls number here tonight. We said this is a powerful girls team out there. The Thunderbirds, that's the world champions Thunderbirds out there, but this Bomber girls team is one to be reckoned with this year. All right, Marty Williamson has the helmet again with Glenn Miller, number one for the Thunderbirds, trailing close behind. Marty Williamson has picked up a ton of points tonight. Well, this might be Miller's last chance at Williamson. She hadn't got her own skates all night long. I don't, this veteran Miller's got to try something. Glenn Miller coming to the rear of the pack, followed closely by Marty Williamson. Thunderbird girls just have not had the spark tonight. Let's see if they can get back here in this final minute of skating. Trail by six points. Gwen Miller has the helmet. Marty Williamson has her hung up at the rear of the pack. Patsy Delgado drops out. Oh, nice move. Nice step. Nice side step by Gwen Miller. She's coming in. The T Bird girls got that pack locked up. Yeah. Keep on going. She's got time out there, Jen. Gwen Miller digging out. Coming down the she back straight away. Flying on that track. Coming down to home straight away. Patsy Delgado, big block side step. Marty Williamson gets it. I don't know if she picked up that final point, but she's picked up a punch. She finally got had to rattle his teeth. Look out! Oh! A drop kick by Gwen Miller. Take that, you rat. Well, he must not have had his wallet in tonight because he felt that lick. E.G. Miller taking a rest on the track after getting eight wheels right in the rib cage. We're at the end of this third skating period. The Thunderbirds did a good job of coming back. They trail only by one, 28 to 27. This fourth period's gonna be something. The men are really gonna let it hang out out there. They really are, but let's stay tuned for Voice of the Fans and Jim McInerney. Hi, I'm Jim McInerney with the Voice of the Fans. It's an open forum for you, the fan, to speak out, either by letter or in person, as you visit one of the games. Tonight's question deals with Georgia Haas' recent demand on the commission concerning compensation for her losing the contract of Randy Whitman back to the T-Birds. But she has demanded that Mike Flanagan and Rafi Valadares be turned over to her good friends Leroy Gonzalez and E.G. Miller for compensation. Well, we want to know what you feel, but let's ask some of the stands, fans here on the stands, see what they have to say. Hi, what is your name? Where are you from? And what do you think about the compensation for Georgia Haas? I'm Sandy Bus, and I'm from Las Vegas, and I think Ralph and Mike should stay with the T-Birds. And you, sir, your name? Uh, John Trujillo from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and I think Georgia Haas shouldn't have anybody for her team. For her team. Thank, Thank you very much. What is your name? Where are you from? Vicky Trujillo from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, 
that's just a, a sample of some of the fans here. We'd like to hear from you. So if you drop us a line to Voice of the Fans on the address that you see on your screen, let us know how you feel. What is your opinion? And we'd like to broadcast all the letters that we receive for Voice of the Fans, but we just don't have all the time. But we'd like to say hello to some of the, the people that have written us some letters. First of all, all the way from British West Indies, Julie Smith, for, I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right, Angula, well, we thank you for your letter. And how about Glenn Mayer from Richmond, Indiana? And the answer to your question is, uh, yes, she is. And also, from the great state of Texas and the city of San Antonio, Dana Campbell. And the answer to your question is, yes, my hair is real. <laughs> and also, Dave, Kyle, and Rob, the guys from the four C's at the University of Wisconsin, I got to tell you, your letter made my day. Well, we thank you, and we don't have much more time, so I'm going to say goodbye until next week. My name's Jim McInerney. Now, and we got the start of the fourth period here. Rich Heminger going out against number seven, Pat Perry, the Thunderbirds. Pat Perry having a tough time going up against that big beat. He took a pretty good hit in there, Ted. Number 49, Rich Heminger. Oh, oh. He took the big man down. Pat, He's going on. Look at this kid. Pat Perry, perseverance pays off. Oh, Flanagan lowered that man in there again, too. Oh, the ground is shaking, but Pat Perry has Bernie Jackson at the rear of the pack to deal with. That should be the end of that jam. Per wow. Look at this rookie out there. He's... Oh, he's still going. He's taking a beating here. Somebody ought to tell Pat when you go off in the infield, son, it's all over. Yeah, Take it easy. Don't hurt that body. To take a breather, pal. Yeah. Boy, that kid, that kid really had perseverance in there, didn't he? What a... There's Ralphie Valadares saying. Hey, what? This rookie, watch this rookie moving here. He comes up behind this big veteran skater and hits him. Look. He's tackling. <laughs> Nice. Boy, that, there's a guy that wants to make well, the team. He did everything he could. That's unusual. I think that belongs to the Chicago Bears. Well, he says, I love Randy. There's a lot of people that love Randy, but Georgia Haas don't. Oh, look at Flanagan flying around the outside. Bernie Jackson on the inside. Mike Flanagan really burning up the crowd. Yeah, up on the pack. That is Jackson. What a move by that man. Bernie Jackson, oh, punishing the Thunderbird man. Ray Robles down. And Bernie says, who is there? Nobody left. He said that's enough points. There's not a white and green team shirt standing out there. Good job by Bernie Jackson, number 48 for the Golden State Bombers with five minutes, 50 seconds to go. It looks like he's given them a five-point lead again. It's a big five-point lead. Madigan ought to get off that rail, get in that packing, because his team's trailing right now. He's playing right into Jackson's hands. Jackson's a crafty guy, isn't he? He really is. Next to Bernie Jackson, Mike Flanagan looks like a noodle. Yeah, but I tell you, though, the bomber boss wants Flanagan in the worst way. And that's one way to break up the T-Birds. There was that score, Ted. 37, or 27 to 32. Favor the bomber. Thunderbirds trail by five. They give the helmet to Brent Futura, crazy Brent Futura. And the Golden State Bombers give the helmet to Ronnie Cheetah. Futura's been a little quiet tonight, but he ought to have enough energy left here to tear this track apart if he gets started. Number 40. Oh! Whoa. That what kind kick. of move was that? That referee ought to keep watching that here. Ronnie Cheatham looking back and oh, another kick. Brent Futura still hanging in, but Cheatham's working him over hard. Hug him out to drive. And he put him out over that rail. He's a crafty guy. His whole team is tough out there, Ted. Bernie Jackson at the rear to help. Ronnie Cheatham continuing to Jackson sending him way up, way up. Jackson's going to get a roll. Oh, boy. Ronnie Cheatham with a devastating, vicious hit. Another vicious kick. Ronnie the Ooh. Cat Cheatham. Look at, look at this man tearing through the pack out there. Look at him. This guy is showing unbelievable strength and speed. Danny Rogers goes by the infield camera. Ronnie Cheatham coming around the outside. Look out. Mike Flanagan got him. But Cheatham went out nine feet in the air onto the concrete floor of the showboat. I don't think Flanagan's going yet. yet. He's, he's had enough punishment in here. Keep your eye open there, Mike. Watch out behind you there, boy. E.G. Miller up on the rail. Is he in the midst of him? Look at this. Bernie Jackson coming up from behind. Four referees just got his two legs off. Look at him. Dump that big man with a right cross there. Unbelievable. Bernie Jackson didn't expect anything like that. Flanagan going after E.G. Miller. He's got a hold of Miller. He's got him in the infield. Oh. I don't think he cares whether he 
finishes this game. He just wants to get even right now. Flanagan. These two men are going at it right now. Flanagan having a tough time punching against the guy who's in his street shoes. Flanagan on eight wheels can't get off a clean blow. He, he, hit, he hit that 48 guy there pretty good. Lick. He knocked him on his wallet, didn't he? But you're right. Miller was standing flat-footed, and he was giving Flanagan a tough time. Three minutes, 35 seconds to go here in the final skating period. For the T-Birds, that's three short minutes. For the Bombers, they just want that clock to keep on rolling. That's what he said. There's your score, Ted. Ten, Ten points, big yeah. points. And they give the helmet for Bernie Jackson for the Gold State Bombers again. He's a tough competitor. Mike Flanagan going out against him. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go. Thunderbirds trail by 10. These are the two guys that have been going at it all night long. Might as well stay out there and finish it. Bernie Jackson's style is just, come on, Mike Flanagan. Bernie Jackson, oh, look out, Flanagan working over on his shoulders. That big man's oh, holding on. Down. Down. Big man down, take him down low. Good move out of Flanagan. Mike Flanagan cut down Bernie Jackson, and Bernie Jackson had a bewildered look on his face. How'd that happen? Flanagan took him through on the inside. Six big points. That's pulling up closer, Ted. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in this whole game. Well, that's sure better than being 10 points down. You see Debbie McCorkle turn the men on here. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. They still trail by four points. This is a team game. Even the girls are out there yelling and screaming. All it's going to keep on going. Pick up those points. Mike Flanagan might be hurting his case. He's putting on a terrific show here in the final period, which makes him look even more attractive to E.G. Miller. Yeah, but look who's coming out. Look who's got the help. Sam the man Washington. He's been pretty quiet this game, but the Thunderbirds call on him in the pit. He's the guy they look for towards the end of the game. Sam has got it, got it going, and, he, and he's got this crowd yelling and screaming. And he just glided by number 42, Danny Rogers of the Bombers. Danny Rogers by on the inside. Sam Washington up for the One to 37, the Bombers destroy the Thunderbirds in that final period. What a hard-fought game with a cheap shot from E.G. Miller. I'll tell you what, Jess, if I were skating, I would have stood on his neck for that one. Well, you can call it cheap all you want to, but it worked. The Bombers pulled this out. The T-Birds were caught flat-footed out there. But you know what I, I can't believe? Even when she's not in the building, 
Georgia Haas, the lady in red, still casts a shadow on the T-Bird, doesn't she? She sure does. That compensation thing has been bothering the Thunderbirds this entire game. It resulted in a loss, 41-37. to E.G. Miller wants Mike Flanagan. Leroy Gonzalez wants Ralphie Valadares. It's just the whole thing is screwy. Yeah, I think it took its toll on Flanagan. Flanagan was out there tonight. He was trying to get even and everything, and the kid did a good job in there, but I think he could have done a little bit better and kept things under control, especially on that last jam. Well, this game is history, but we'll <laughs> let's find out a little bit more about it. We'll go up to Paul Trackside. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's get right to it. Fellas, what the blazes is going on here anyway? Ralphie, what do you have to say? Well, first of all, I'm, I don't know about this guy, but there'll be a long day in hell when I skate again with this guy and with you. And as far as Mike is concerned, no way, because if you ever get on the track and step track, Mike can knock, knock your brains out. That is if you had any. That's a likely story. You guys are just running scared because we beat you so bad, like usual. And you, Buster, you're going to be on my team, and you're going to be on Leroy's team. So you might as well just thank God it's going to be over for you. Now you can't talk to my little coach like that. I mean, you got no class. I got all the class. You got no class, and you just can't be doing any of that. And we're going to be seeing you out there. Leroy, what do you have to say about this? I'm, uh, aren't we getting touchy? A little bit angry here. You know what, Ralph? I want to see your retirement days go out very nice when they find out and see you skating for me. <laughs> no, that's right. Now, just, no, no, just a second here. Just a second here. Now, just a second. Just a second here. Well, I'll tell you. I think this is a sample of what's going to happen whenever these four get together. They just don't like each other. Well, it's again the final score in tonight's game. T-Birds 37s, Bombers 41. Till then, next week again, I try to get rid of this East Coast throat. We'll be back with more IRDL action next week. Until then, this is Paul Greenwood saying thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Everybody, I'm Paul Greenwood. Well, still got a little touch of the of the East Coast throat, but I'll tell you what, I'm just as interested as you are to find out what happens when two bosom buddies like E.G. Miller and Leroy Gonzalez go against each other in a rock'em sock'em game like the one we have for you tonight. Now, <laughs> let me tell you about the only two things that these guys agree on is that E.G. Miller and Leroy Gonzalez both think that Georgia Haas is right in demanding compensation for the return of Randy Whitman to the T-Birds. Of course, there's a reason for that. That's because the compensation is in the form of Ralphie Valadares, who Georgia will give to Leroy Gonzalez, and Mike Flanagan, who Georgia will give to E.G. Miller. Huh. Well, for more on this and tonight's game, let's go to our two trackside commentators, those two former skating greats, Ted Maroff and Jess Adams. Don't worry about your voice, Paul. You'll be dead soon. But I think they ought to name tonight's game instead of the Hawks Bombers when thieves collide. E.G. Miller, Leroy Gonzalez, supposedly great friends out on the track. They're bitter enemies, Jess. You can say that again, Ted. And let me tell you, tonight you're going to see two of the meanest, the slipperiest general managers that ever opposed each other. Instead of this game being billed the Hawks against the Bombers, it really ought to be called the bad boy against the pretty boy out there. But you know, Ted, in all seriousness, there's only one person that I know of that can keep these two guys in check at the same time. And that's the lady in red, Ms. Georgia Haas. That's right. That's mainly because she has one thing they both want. Mike Flanagan, Ralphie Valadares, their compensation case before the commissioner's office. Leroy and E.G. are hanging around like vultures waiting to jump on the spoil. Well, to tell you the truth, I can't see Valadares or Flanagan, either one in one of these uniforms out here tonight. But with, with the, what's going on today, anything's possible, especially with Miss Georgia Haas, Miller, and uh, Gonzalez out here. Well, that's enough of those three. Let's talk about tonight's game. We got some good matchups right. in the men's field. Two great rookies, Bob Huey and Tony Swatton. 
I'll tell you, this one is a marathon skater, and he just returned from Europe where he won a lot of events over there. But they tell me this Watton is one strong dude out there. That has to be an interesting matchup. And in the ladies' field, poor Patsy Delgado is going to have to try and stay out from underneath the giant Amazon Deanna Booher all night. Well, they call her Queen Kong Booher. And let me tell you, she's six foot three in her stock and feet and about 235 pounds. And I hope to go, good Lord, she don't get them out of way. <laughs> I'm sure the Bombers hope they don't have Delgado meatballs to pack up and take home tonight. Ooh. But we've got a game here tonight. It's going to be wild. It's going to be war. It's what we know as roller mania. But let's take it back to Paul Trackside. Right you are, Ted and Jess, right you are. Roller Derby in its finest. And it'll be underway in just a moment when we come back right after these messages. It's he Start of the period. The Golden State Bombers against the Hollyweird Hawks. There's the gun. The girls are off. Let's get it straight, Ted. They call themselves the Hollyweird. That's not what we gave them. No, that's true. And there's giant Deanna Booher with that huge hairdo at the rear of the pack. Six foot three, 235 pounds. Look at the size of these two. Arnie Williamson, number 47. Paula Wilson, number, it looks like 33 for the Hawks tonight. Big size difference there. Arnie Williamson gives her a shot to the inside. Paula Wilson comes back. That box. All of the Brat Wilson. Marty Williamson takes a big... Oh, and Booher! Destroyed Marty Williamson. Unbelievable. Patsy Delgado at the rear for the Bombers. Oh, nice move by Paula Wilson. Good. Oh, stutter step. Picks up two more points over the Bombers. Spin high. Good. Lyle Morris down by on the inside of Lyle Morris. Corey Weichel to the rail. Paula Wilson doing a great job yet. Yeah, but what was on camera here was that Booher was tearing that Bomber jammer up. Jess, you ain't seen nothing. Wait to see where I tear up tonight. Was that when the that was when the ground was rumbling when she rolled, rolled by? Well, Leroy Gonzalez likes it. Look at that. He's telling her what. Put me in this penalty box. Yep, that's where she put her. They put her in the penalty box. So the Hawks are down for one jam around here. Four to nothing. The Hawks lead the Bombers. Deanna Booher got a penalty on that last. They also have a four-point lead to start this game. Patsy Delgado has to feel a little better. She doesn't have Deanna Booher out there to worry about. Six minutes to go in this first skating period. Bombers and the Hawks. Patsy Delgado with the blue and the gold of the Hawks. Number 42. Coming to the rear of the pack. She's all alone. The Hawks have, have not been able to get a jam around that pack yet. Patsy Delgado's picked up a couple. Bomber girls doing a good job in the pack there. Oh, Lori Weichel just like that. Oh, hammer. Hammered that poor Hawk blocker. Wow, look at 
this. Look at Weigel. Right in the middle of the back. Hits her, then gives her one under the chin and just rips through there. Both of those gals just went down. There was no way they could stop Weigel. Boy, no finesse there. Just sheer power by Lori Weigel. Absolutely power, and her team's got a big three-point lead here. Bombers take a 7-4 to four lead here with 3 minutes, 35 seconds to go. We've got some extracurricular activity here. These girls are rolling around. Boy, this Buhar said she's going to tear it up tonight. She hasn't stopped since she got on the track. Patsy Delgado wrestles her to the ground. But it ought to take her a while to get up because that's a long way down. Look at these fans. They love it. Patsy Delgado, I hope she knows what she's doing. Oh, big right to the head, but I, don't, I think she hit her hair. She just got the referee. Buhar didn't flinch a bit. Uh-oh, no, no, no. Sometimes. If you can't stop him, just let him go at it. That's what the referee did a good job there. He just kind of backed away and said, okay, I'll let you both go home. Well, Deanna Booher's getting around this track. She's fairly mobile. She's made vast improvement in her short roller derby career here in the IRDL. Well, she, isn't she coming back from a pretty serious injury, though, Ted, didn't she? That's right. She had a compound fracture of her lower tibula. Well, I call that pretty darn serious. She's really shown a lot of character coming back from an injury like that. But we have Denise Green out on the jam for the Hawks. I believe so. Long and lanky. Denise Green for the Hawks. She sure is a pretty lady. She sure is. Being followed by Patsy Delgado. Look at that. Drop the ball and picked him up. Lori Weichel tried to stop her, but she snuck by on the inside. Weichel's still going after her. Denise Green going by on the inside. It looks like she might get a ball. She's down towards the inside of that track. You see Leroy Gonzalez looking on. I think they gave her four. Four big hog points on that jam. They said that bomber jammer didn't pick up any, so that puts the Hawks up by one with about a minute and 55 seconds to go in this first period. There's Leroy up there. Leroy Gonzalez advancing down the track towards Lori Weichel. Weichel just put Paula and the Brat Wilson out onto the track, and there's Booher, hit for tack. Patsy Delgado compete with that size. I, I couldn't compete with that size. But the main important thing is whether Delgado can finish this game. Right now, she's taking a lot out of her. Look at the, hey, there's the two buddies out there. There they are. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You can drink coffee, you can have a coat, you can shake hands, you can do whatever you want. But when you get inside that track, there ain't no buddies. There's, I don't think the lights are this bright in here tonight. Yes, it is. Do those Hawks need those sunglasses on the infield? That's the Hollywood Hawks. Right now, they got a one-point lead out there. Number 34, Julie Martinez has the helmet for the Hawks. Going out against Monica Garcia, number 45 for the Bombers. Monica Garcia puts the rear of the pack. Double blocked by the Hawks in the rear. Michael back there to take on that Hawk jammer and keep her back. This is get rid of her. Well, she got rid of the Hawk. Here she comes up. She's just off camera. Monica Garcia. Tiptoes through for two points. Big points up there. That it puts him in a one-point lead with only about 35 seconds to go in his first game. First game. Monica Garcia, number 45. Nice job for the Bombers. Brought him back, put him one point in the lead in this period. First skating period here. The girls always <laughs> come off and give the men a lead going into the next period, and that's what the girls are trying to do out here. Let's see if the Hawks can come back and tie this up. They've only got about 16 seconds. If they got a 16-second jammer out there, let's see. See E.G. Miller watching. Just think, just the Thunderbirds are going to be facing the same Hawk team next week. I want to tell you, this Hawk team is tough. Five seconds to go. And they got the three. pack locked Lori up. They can just get up there. Oh! Lori White with the rear. Let's Williamson, see. did she sneak did by? She get by. I can't tell. on that. We're here at the end of the first period. Nice job by Marty Williamson. She has turned into a prolific scorer here in the IRDL. This Number bomber team is really tough out here, and so is the Hawks. But let me tell you, the Bombers came off. Ted, and they got a they got a big lead right there. There they are, frickin' fracked. Those two snakes, if you ever saw them. We're at the end of this first period. The Bombers pull a surprise and take a 13-8 lead as we go into the second skating period. We'll be right back. Hi, Bill Griffiths Jr. with Roller Derby Profiles. This is where we take an opportunity to talk to some of the different skaters from around the International Roller Derby League, find out what they're really like, or get an inside look. 
Today, our special guest packs a lot of wallop in a very small size. Five foot tall, Lyle Smiles Morris. Lyle, welcome to Roller Derby Profiles. Thank you, Bill. I'm happy to be here. Well, Lyle, there's a lot of people out there that probably aren't aware that you have an extremely interesting family history. Care to share it with us? Well, my great-great-grandfather is named Samuel F.B. Morse, and he invented the telegraph. You know, Bill, the Morse code? <laughs> <laughs> and then my grandfather was the director of the original Godzilla back in 1956, and he was pretty mighty himself. I'd say so. Uh... It was actually my father that got me interested in roller derby, Bill. It was your father that got you interested in roller derby? You mean Godzilla wasn't enough. <laughs> How could your father have possibly gotten you interested in roller derby? Well, my father was the producer of a film called The Big Brawl, where they used the L.A. T-Birds in a, a skating scene. And he came up to me and he said, Lyle, we're bringing the L.A. T-Birds down next week to be in the film. How do you like that? And I was really excited because I've been watching roller derby all my life. So when they were down, I went to John Hall and I said, John, how do you get people to skate in the roller derby? And he said, we have training sessions every week. Why don't you come down and train? And I've been here ever since. Well, I can tell you for sure, I have seen Lyle Morris skate. And if there was any message to send out to any of the other skaters on the track, it's dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 which means SOS. That's right. Watch out. Lyle, I can't thank you enough for being on Roller Derby Profiles. I hope you can join us again sometime. Thank you. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to write to us, please do. The number is on the screen. We'd love to talk to you. The mail has been fantabulous. We're getting mail from all over the country, and we'd love to hear from you. So until next time, for Roller Derby Profiles, this is Bill Griffiths, Jr. saying so long for now. Second period as we see the Hawk girls dressed to kill. I tell you, they really shook that uh, whole track at first period, didn't they? Well, that girl's dressed to kill also. And she's a little worried. I can't tell which team she's rooting for right now. This crowd seems to be split right down the middle. And look at look at the score here, Ted. 13-8. The Bombers and ladies gave their men a 13-8 lead going into the second period. It's a big five-point lead, and that means a lot to that team out there in the blue. Ronnie Cheatham, number 44, out for the Bombers. In the blue and the gold. I don't think the Hawks have a jammer shaken out yet. Ronnie Cheatham, they got it.